Hello everybody, welcome back. We are working on our uh, folio using Graphic 45 um, Kaleidoscope. This is my design team project for Country Craft Creations. And we're making, as I mentioned, a folio. And today we are gonna start matting, which is great because these papers are so pretty. And we're gonna start with these waterfalls. I've already done one of them, and we're just gonna do the second one. And we're going to make a band to hold it closed first. So let me give you the measurements for that. And this piece is seven and a half by two and a quarter with one of the short ends scored at a quarter of an inch. And we are just going to center this on the bottom just like that um, to come up and hold the belly band closed. And I'm just eyeballing it. We're going to put the glue on this inside part of the fold. There we go. Glue did not want to come. Now I've got more than I need. All right, and we're just going to, like I said, just eyeball the center. You can measure it if you want. Just keep it loose while you fiddle with it until it's, oops, not that loose. where you want it to be. That looks pretty good. Okay. Oh, that doesn't look very straight. Let me see if I can get that straighter. Okay, that looks good. Then, I'm going to need to add magnets. Okay, now, I'm going to put one of these on the inside of that band and one of them on here. I've got quite a bit of room to play with, so let's go ahead. And put it, whoops, it's sticking to my finger. Okay, so I put it right about there. Just putting a scrap there. This is going to be uh, bowed a little bit, so make sure when you bring this up that it's laying flat. Don't pull it super tight because you're adding mats and things, so you know you just want it nice and smooth. Don't tug on it. Okay. Now, I'll tell you how to do these mats. Okay, the first. Okay, let me just hang on. Let me show you what we need to do. What we want to do is continue this design on this page all the way down the waterfall, okay? And this is extremely effective with, um, let me see, hang on. You know, something like this where you have the elephant going all the way down or the zebra going all the way down, but we need this page for the cover. So we're using this page, okay? So you need to keep track. You need to cut a strip from your 12 inch paper that is five and a quarter inches wide, okay, with the design running vertically. Okay, then from the top of that strip, cut a piece four and a quarter inches high. All right, and that is going to go here. Then you need to cut eight strips going down the page that are half an inch wide. And my bake cutter will not cut something as small as half an inch. I've got my little one out with a brand new blade in it. I strongly recommend if you're cutting something this narrow that you start with a good sharp blade. Okay. So, and now you need to keep track of these. They need to go in order. So tuck each one 
underneath where it's going to go. So then the next one is half an inch. Let's go in there. Okay. And this seems to be really popular. Just want to make sure I've got the right one. Uh, method of doing waterfalls with this paper. I've seen it three or four times now. And uh, I like it myself, so I'm doing it too. There's nothing wrong with scrap lifting an idea. And if I could remember the first place I'd seen it, I would credit it. And if I do find it, I will let you know. You can see what I'm doing off camera where I'm organizing these, but I will show you. I'll bring it over. And this will be the last one. I believe that was eight. Okay. So what I did as I was cutting those, let me get that out of the way. My cutter. Is I just tucked each one underneath where it was going to go, like that one's going there, this one's going here, etc. Okay, so now I am not inking, but what I'm definitely doing, because I have one, um, I did the other belly band, I mean the other waterfall already, and I did not use my scrap for the first couple, and I got them crooked, so I need to have some white under there to really be able to see the edge of this black paper. And it's very important that when you put these down, that you get them right side up. Or you will lose the effect, especially if you're using um, something with a more obvious image like those elephants or, you know, something on another type of paper that is more graphical even than this. All right. So you want to get that on there like that. Okay, be careful that magnet is under there. Okay, so then you're going to slide your scrap under there. Make sure you don't lose track that this is going right side up. If it's got words on it, you should be able to tell the words are going to be right side up. back through most likely and add white mats here, but maybe not. It just depends what I think I'm going to use for pictures. Okay, so now we have that one. Put this one up. Put your white scrap under if you need it. I mean, if you don't need it, by all means, don't bother, but I need it. I can't see the edge of the black without it. trying to decide what I want to do after this and I really feel like I need to um, even if I don't actually glue down the cover which I can't really because I need something that I don't have and I won't be able to get until Thursday um, and today's Sunday um, but I need to decide and maybe cut out quite a few things because I don't want to risk using those papers somewhere else if I need them. And then do some of the other bigger pieces 
on the inside. But I can't really cut those pieces until I know exactly what I need for that front cover. And of course we already made, or at least cut out the, a couple of the pieces we need for the arch. So I just need to get the, the bits that are gonna go under the arch. Hope you guys can see this. I hope I'm in under the camera. I think I am. these as you can see the design just continues right down the waterfall and then this is going to close it and I haven't decided what we're going to use for that yet and you know what that doesn't really I'm wondering if I need to add another magnet because it's still kind of poofy see I wonder if it's going to matter. I feel like once that's glued down, it's really not going to be poofy. The reason it's poofy is because it's not glued down. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. All right, so let me pull this over. And so what we're going to have is, here's the other one. That one's going to go there. And this one is going to go here. All right, like that. And again, once the once the bases are glued, they won't be so poofy as they're looking right now. Okay. And we just need to decide what's going behind those. But again, I don't want to do I don't want to cut any more paper until I know exactly what I need for that cover. So I'm going to pull these out. Set those aside. Oh, you know what? I need a. I'm just gonna put a little scrap in here to hold those flaps until I can get that tag made. All right, so let's get our arch. Right, 
also, remember we made the arch a while ago. So there's the arch. And this is gonna be up either on some more cardstock or foam tape. And the elephants are gonna be inside the arch, but they are going to be um, they're going to be fussy cut out on a piece of chipboard. So they're going to be up. I need to get that lined up. That's why this is going to be up. To make room for them. And my thought is that I will put one of these on chipboard and fussy cut around the elephants. And then I'll take that and apply it to the same piece of paper. That's why I said I needed both sheets for the cover. Just to give dimension. Okay, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So that being the case, Then I will have, I will have a little bit off the top of this paper and a little bit on the right side to work with. But I'm still gonna set these two sheets aside and I won't need any other papers for the cover yet that I, I don't think. All right, so I was just trying to plan what I was gonna need so that I don't cut what I need. could go ahead we might as well glue down our waterfalls since I now know what I can cut and what I can't be careful with these we cut them I cut this strip and then I cut this strip right next to it so they actually if you see that they actually uh, match across so make sure you get the one that belongs on the, the right on the right etc okay so let's see I don't want to use these strips because these are kind of awesome. I'll save those for something. And this is from the cover, but it's not going to be big enough for that. And I don't want to use these cut apart sheets because we want those. Set those aside. Now, not very much of this is actually showing, so we could just use like the solid purple, which kind of looks nice. Or, let's check on this side, the solid turquoise, and no, that's way too bright. Not for the book, but for that particular spot. And I have this kind of sparkly pink, which I love, but not for this. set aside those because I already decided not those. I like this purple. I'm kind of leaning towards this purple. pieces. Nine and a half by five and three quarters. Just double check. Yep, nine and a half by five and three quarters. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cut 
like this. I have really got to do something about my small table situation that I have going. I'm going to use this cutter because I can't cut five and three quarters accurately on my big one. is going here. And the other one is going here. Could have been a little bit longer, but it's fine. Okay. okay. This is beautiful cardstock. This is the um that new color series that um, Tamara has at Country Clarification. It's kind of smooth on one side and this sort of linen texture on the other. I'm using the linen texture on the outside of this. here. Actually, you know what I'm going to use? I get my, I guess I use my Tim Holtz. I think I'm going to place this. Let's see. Okay, that's going to be too low. I 
think that's pretty good. So that's going to be three quarters of an inch up from the edge of the page. about there and I'm trying to decide I feel as though I might want to use score tape for this rather than glue there's a lot of bulk here and I think the score tape might grab on better like maybe I think what I'll do I'm gonna put score tape around the perimeter and glue in the middle I just got a brand new bottle of Fabri-Tac, which I might use. Okay, so. check and make sure you've got the right one on the right side. Remember, there's, you know, if you cut them the way I did, you, there's definitely a direction. of measuring and eyeballing. So we want to be three quarters of an inch up. Just lifting and pressing these right here. So I'm trying to get that, make sure that's secure. Okay, yeah, that looks nice. Good. Okay. Now it's a little higher than it is. Like it's got more room at the bottom than it does on the top, but I'm okay with that. I want to make sure it's right. I think it's a little hard the inside, but that's okay. That one is too. Okay, there we go. This one looks lower than that one. That's just what I was trying to avoid. No, nope, if I take it up, it's gonna damage. Okay, it's fine. We'll love it. Be a little more careful when you're doing yours. Okay, so there's, all right, so there's that. And then we have this. Oh, hang on. I can't remember how I wanted to do it this way, I think. We have a lot of bulk for now from that. Okay, it's all right. It's just going to take a little training. And we're going to put those ties, which we're definitely going to need. And I think, do I want to put the ties in yet? Wouldn't hurt. 
we could go ahead and map these now anyway. Let's see. definitely going to need to be just gradually worked to keep them flat. All right, so what I'm going to do is place the seam binding. Where's my other ruler? So the top of the pocket is here. I'm going to use that as my um, measuring spot for this tape. Let's see. Okay, so from the top of the pocket to the top of the page is, let's see, well, the page itself, let's do it this way. The page itself is nine and three quarters. So half of nine and three quarters is five of five, four and seven eighths, right? So that means I want to go up here, I want to measure down four and seven eighths. I mean, I don't have to be, you could eyeball it, but I'd like to be at least reasonably close to center on this. So four and seven eighths is right there, give or take. Right. Then I'll come across to this one. I just attached the seam binding here. It's got to come around and be tied in a bow. So it's going to come to here, and then there needs to be enough to tie a bow. so tight. You don't want to damage things. Alright. So just, just tie it to get an idea of how much seam binding I need there. Okay. So there's that. Okay, so we don't need to tie those, but that's where that's going to be. You know what it is? These are hitting. That's why it's not closing, right? These are hitting. Alright. What are they? I 
think that's just going to be a matter of, like I said, sort of training it to close where I want it to. Once these things are matted, that will help. Okay. Now, let me close this. And let's decide. Now, to this point, we've been pretty symmetrical, but I don't want... I don't really want to use the exact same mats here and here. I think it would just make it blend too much. So let's just pick a few mats and see what we like. Let me make myself some room here. All right, I'm gonna um, pick a few mats and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back and I've picked out and put down some mats that I want to show you. my ruler here so I can measure them for you. All right, what did I do with my ruler? Well, I don't see it, but that's it. I'll just grab my Tim Holtz. Okay, so, oops. All right, so this one Is. You can see why I don't like this ruler. It's nowhere, not anywhere near as easy to see as my blue ruler, which I must have run away with it. Okay, so this mat is five and a half by four and three quarters for this one. So these would be the same. And then this mat is five and three quarters by five and a half wide. And then the pocket is five and a half wide by two and a half high. And these are, they'll be the same on both. Okay. And um, all I did was the two flaps and the pocket. So I still need something for here and whatever I'm gonna put on the insides. And then here are our, our ties and then and then this is the same. And the reason that I um, stopped with picking mats and also just went ahead and put these down is um, laying mats is, is a pretty straightforward process. So um, I will, you know, pick out the rest of the mats and put them down. But um, I really want to get to the cover because that is not so straightforward. And I want to be able to spend time on that. I don't want the video to be you know, 12 parts long. So, let's look at our cover. And as you know, we earlier made um, this arch, and as you'll see, I've added to it. Um, and I had said that I couldn't continue with it because I didn't have what I needed because I was gonna go purchase a charm to hang here. But then I remembered I have a whole box full of beads. So I just strung a few beads and taped it, score tape, to the back of my arch. And then um, I spent a little time with my craft knife and my nail file just smoothing the inside. But until this gets glued together, I'm not really sure exactly what I need to, um, to do in terms of neatening up the edges. Um, so there's that. So I'm gonna set that aside. Actually, I can glue that together at this point, but let me show you the next thing. So these are the elephants that we're going to fussy cut. And I was thinking about putting them on um, that black chipboard, but that would have made it very difficult to fussy cut them. So I just put them on a thin piece of cardboard that was the back of a paper pad, glued it down, let it dry, and now I'm gonna fussy cut these out. All right, which um, I'm gonna apologize. I'm probably gonna be out of camera view for a little of this, because I really wanna do a good job, which means it needs to be where I can see it. So I just need to cut across that bottom there. So 
there we are. There's our elephants. to be like we're gonna have this piece under it so they still sort of look like they're on there but with dimension okay so that's what's happening with that and now let's get back to our arch and let's get these glued together Decide which glue I want to use for this. I think I'll. Try to decide if I want to use Fabri Tac or if I want to use art glitter glue. I think I'll go ahead and use my art glitter glue. that you got these things cut perfectly and matched perfectly are pretty slim. I certainly didn't. And you can go back through after, once it's fully dry with your craft knife. You know, for instance, like I've got a little showing there from the inside, but I'm not sure how, you know, how super obvious any of that is gonna be in once it's on the cover. And the elephants are going to be behind the arch a little bit. And the arch is going to be up on foam tape as well. Okay. So I think the next thing that we need to do is cut the piece that's going to go as the background from this. And we need to be careful about it because it's going to determine the placement of our elephants inside the arch. So the strip is there. I think that looks good. So the height is going to be measured from here and the width from this side. All right, so that's not too hard. Got it. Here we go. All right, so this piece needs to be eight and three eighths by nine and eight and three eighths by nine and three quarters. You know what? I cut the height from the wrong side, but I don't think it's gonna matter. It's not, because it's not gonna show, so I'm just gonna cut the bottom off. That's going to be too short, but it's not going to matter because it's not going to be visible 
under the arch. All right, so that's gonna go there. This is gonna go on top of it on some foam tape. And then, actually this is gonna go here first on foam tape. So this has to be on enough foam tape to clear to give those elephants a little space. So what I may do is cut some chipboard and glue it here to give it some height and then use the foam tape. But the first thing is definitely gonna to be to glue this down and what I can do, this is the piece that I cut off. So I'm just gonna cut myself a piece and just glue it there, just in case you can see it under the foam tape. All right, so I need a piece up there about three quarters of an inch wide. Probably not necessary, but I'll just feel better knowing it's there. And it might even be too wide, but that's okay. Okay, so let's do this one first. this one right down at the bottom, just a little bit up. Okay. And then let's see if this one's too, if this one's too wide. A little bit, but I'm just going to overlap it because it's none of this is really going to be visible once we get the arch on. It's just there in case somebody peeks underneath that, you know, where the foam tape and the chipboard lifted up. Go ahead and cut the chipboards for the back of this. And I have a few scraps that I'm just going to use. fussy about the measurements here or even if they're straight. It's even fatter than I want. I'm just eyeballing. You can see that all wiggled, but it's not going to matter in the end. This is not the same cutter that I use to cut paper. This is one that I have that I only cut chipboard with it.
pieces to work with. Okay, so now I just want to put some pieces around the perimeter like that. going to need to put this on foam tape or have another layer of the um, uh, of the chipboard. Now the only thing is, of course, this elephant's going to be raised up, so the next piece we put needs to leave space for her ear. So I think we need to put her down next. So let's bring our book over. And this is going on foam tape. So let's go ahead and do that. I have several different widths of the foam tape. And let's go ahead and move the book so we don't accidentally do something to it. Last little bit right in there. Okay, so there we have tons and tons of tape to hold up our elephants. And we may add things like flowers and stuff down the road, but for now, let's do this. And I'm going to add some art glitter glue to the back of this foam tape because I don't know how good this, you know, I don't know how sticky it is. Okay, now we want to line up our elephants with the paper below as best we can, but you don't have to be too, too crazy about it. I mean, it's like, see, I didn't line up that ear very well, but it's okay because it's giving us the dimension we want, so it's okay. All right, so there's the elephants, and they look awesome. Okay, now we have our arch, and here's where we have to figure out exactly how far off the paper do we need to lift this, and that's quite a bit. I'm thinking another layer of chipboard plus some foam tape to do this. Because we really want it. We want it to appear those elephants are passing through the arch, so they, it needs to be high.
got a lot of height. Let's see. That is Looks pretty good because it's still going to go on foam tape. It's going to give it even more height, I think, but maybe not. It almost looks this looks pretty good as is. The only thing I'm thinking. Oh, see, I did leave. I was wondering if I left enough room for her ear, and I did. But I think I'm just going to trim. With, just going to shave back a little bit here. If you do this, just be super careful. Just making sure I've got enough room for her ear right there. Taking very much, just a little bit. Right along the edge there. Okay. If you don't want to have to do that just when you prop this up, just leave your um, chipboard away from that corner. But I don't really think I needed to, but I just, just to be on the safe side. So I was going to use foam tape as well. But I think that might take it up too high. Maybe not though. I like the shadow you get by propping it up. We're doing it. Okay. Now, to line up the bottom of the arch with the bottom of the cover. I do see that I'm seeing the white edge of that paper in there, so I'm going to take my Sharpie, if I can get it in there, and just, I'm just running it along the edge of the paper, just to take that white edge away. going to do it here because it would be obvious. I'm just doing it where I can sort of hide it. So when you're doing yours, I recommend you go ahead and ink the edges of this base page. To, um, it's more visible than I thought it would be. Sharpie's about out of ink, so I'll get that last edge later. Okay. All right, so now we have our little dangle. We have our elephants. We have our arch. And again, I think I'm going to go in with a, a fresh Sharpie and just darken that edge a little bit. However, I like it. And we still have decoration that we can do. Um in behind the arch um, 
up here. Okay, I'm pulling it up so I can see it vertically. And I do like it, and I think, yeah, definitely maybe a few flowers or things under their feet. And then um, some things around the arch. I am happy with that, so. I have these, they're a good color. I'm looking to see what I have. And I have these, which I've used in other projects and love. They may go. Maybe around the top of the arch. I definitely want something under their feet, though. Not those, or at least not in that configuration. I have these. I'm kind of saving those, though, because I have a project in mind, so I'm going to hang on to those. Also have um, I have some dyes too, so I could cut some flowers out specifically. You know, some leaves and things, because I like I like the idea of something trailing up this arch. because they look like lotuses and they're a little flat so they could tuck in behind the arch. the final configuration but is this an idea not that but I think some leaves coming out from there you know like this Let me pull this one up you know something something coming out Maybe, obviously not that but something. Okay. Well, I think that that we're at a good stopping point. Oh, I should look at these. Um, definitely going to need to do some, make some die cuts, I think, out of the fabric, out of the paper that we have. I kind of like the idea of going pretty over the top with the flowers here at the bottom and then maybe a few things coming off the top. 
Um, but anyway, I think we're at a good stopping point. I'm going to make some die cuts and um, go through my stash, see what else I have, and then we'll decide what we're going to do. Okay, missing that little flower. There we go. So, all right. Thank you so much for watching. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Just click the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.